I was just explaining that we just have like many different styles of rooms and then also there's also our off the shelf courses which was on the right hand side of where I clicked um, in the menu screen. So now I'm in our conference hall now, which is where you will be able to do your presentation. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll go to start analysis and it will bring up where I can change languages to German, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese and French. And we are also adding other languages too. Um, this is show live feedback. So um, in terms of live feedback, if I was basically speaking a bit too quietly, it will tell me to speak up. Or if I was looking, if I was in VR, if I was looking too much to the left hand side of the audience, it will tell me to look to the right. Um, the sound distractions are like mobile phones and coughing while you're talking, basically. And then, and then um, yeah, you can also have audience questions while you're doing your speech. So once I'm ready to do my speech, and this also is the same for VR, I would click begin. And then I would, in theory, I would have done a speech. It would have lasted maybe 10, 20 minutes. And then I would click stop analysis. And then it will calculate my results. And the AI feedback would appear with six metrics in VR. But for this, it would be four as it's online. Um, so it will generate, it will um, create um, a score based on the content that you've said, provide more information on that as well. Um, filler words, so if I was using words like um or like a lot, your speaking pace, so if I was speaking too fast or too slowly, it will um, give me information on that. And then my listenability as well, so um, was I easy to listen to, um, did, could they understand me, could you understand what I was um, saying very well based on the content I've said. And then you could also upload all of this to the admin dashboard as well. And um, so the admins will be able to see it. Um, and then you also have AI generated questions based on the speech that you said. So basically on all that content that you put together, you can have AI generated questions come from the audience too. So um, that's how that feature works. Um, the next one that would probably be of interest to you would be our chat GVT role play room. So I'll show you how that works next. Mm -hmm. So I would be met with the avatar, I'd enter my name, my email, and be able to go in. So, it, and then we usually um, say, you should go for the manual. Is there anything here that interests you out of these topics? Excellent. For example, uh, customer service. Yep, sure. So also, I can also change language here as well. So um, she can speak German, um, Spanish, and et cetera. Um, you can also have you will have six choices of avatars when you go into the room um, within the VR version, but with the online version, it's only two. You can also do difficulty levels. So if I wanted to have a rec really hard customer experience, I'd pick hard, and also the language level. So if I wasn't very good at English, I can say, "Can you just do a? It'll be slower for a beginner, and then also more simplified English, and Excellent. then well, this is just like native speaking." No. Excellent, bro. Let's do angry customer. <laughs> See how it goes. <laughs> like, make them happy. Yeah. <laughs> I am outraged. I placed an order two weeks ago and it still hasn't arrived. This is completely unacceptable. What are you going to do about it? I'm so sorry um, that your food box didn't arrive. Um, we do our best to get it to you on time. Um, it seems that something has gone wrong. Um, did you receive the email that we had sent you in regards to this? I don't want excuses. I want my order delivered as promised. I don't care about your emails. I want a solution now. This is ridiculous. Okay, I, I completely understand that. So I apologize that it didn't come. Um, so as a solution, um, what I can do is I, we can put credit on your account of £15 to come off your next food box delivery. No, I don't want a credit. I want my order delivered now. £15 credit doesn't make up for the inconvenience and frustration I've faced. I demand that my order is delivered immediately. I apologize, um, but due to logistics, we can't get your order to you at this time. Um, is there anything else we could do? We could possibly get you another order for next week, um, but for this week, your order won't be arriving, unfortunately.
This is unacceptable. I demand to speak to a manager right now. I want a full refund for this order, and I expect some sort of compensation for the inconvenience and disappointment caused. This level of incompetence is outrageous. So what I will do is I will pass your comments along to the manager. Unfortunately, they won't be able to do any more than I can do for you. Um, we can only apologise and try to make sure this doesn't happen again. As a token of apology, we will be adding an extra £5 on top of the uh, money that we're going to give you. So I will offer you a fi £5 credit and £15 refund. Fine, I'll accept your offer. But be assured, if this happens again, I will not hesitate to take my business elsewhere. This level of service is not up to par, and I expect better in the future. So we'll end it there. Um, she'll provide feedback on how I did and what I could have done to give a better customer service experience. Oh, we're free. <laughs> That's shocking. <laughs> It is commendable that you remain polite and try to address the customer's concerns, even in the face of their anger and frustration. Excellent. However, one area for improvement is maintaining a more professional tone throughout the conversation. That's it is important cool. to speak clearly and confidently, avoiding the use of filler words such as um, which can detract from your credibility. Additionally, you demonstrated some active listening by attempting to understand the customer's issue and responding accordingly. However, it would be beneficial to actively summarize or paraphrase the customer's concerns to ensure that you fully comprehend the situation before offering solutions. By doing so, you can show the customer that you are truly engaged and interested in resolving their problem. Furthermore, while you did express regret for the inconvenience caused to the customer, it is essential to convey empathy more effectively. Instead of simply apologizing, try to acknowledge the customer's feelings and reassure them that their concerns are being taken seriously. This can help to build rapport and trust with the customer. Uh, very good, and uh, uh, we we did it that as a, as a partner with Vodafone, and yeah. uh, and uh, uh, the vision compiler in this case will be ideal. We are learning learning first of all how to speak with customers to yeah. get your score to be there, but the adding more value to the customer it's actually our vision compiler that can guide the gust, cu customer also mm -hmm. with AI to show him how to put the SIM card in the GigaCube or whatever. Uh, uh, thing he or she is doing like if uh, she or he is cooking uh, guidance yeah. how to cook something a guidance cook, uh, how to make uh, motherboard chips and, and so w whatever it is and then you have visually okay that was the reason now here is the enlightening the guidance how to do it right try mm -hmm. it please without uh, uh, like uh, it's perfect example how should be and then mm -hmm. after when the customer is satisfied that will be the perfect score like uh, uh, like win-win situation the customer resolve his problem you will learn yeah. how to speak mm -hmm. and uh, that so is that you would like to kind of incorporate kind of the way Vodafone products do work within virtual speech so we do have a function for custom prompts where you'll be able to add your own rubrics and be able to, if you did have like instructions of how something is supposed to be, so if it was supposed to be like um, the AI cookbook that you, I think you're describing, yeah, um, yeah. if it was, if it wasn't working a certain way, you'll be able to add a rubric um, within that to, so the AI knows what the instructions are supposed to be. So if it's wrong, they can be marked down on that. So we do have that feature within um, virtual speech too. Um, so that would be our custom prompts feature, which is an additional add-on. Yeah, yeah. And that mm -hmm. add-on, uh, just Vision Code Pilot is more uh, mm -hmm. virtual object oriented, and then the customer sees those objects in in, in the in um, uh, in the air in his yeah. room. He has the real physical device, and he compare. Okay, the virtual object is saying me to put that to click here to to restart over there, and yeah. he looks at the real thing. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Okay, I will click here, I will insert the card underneath, 
I will do something about it. Mm -hmm. And most of it, like 99% of the customer understood, okay, ah, that is what my support mean, mean mm -hmm. to say to really do it. Like, oh, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, to be, so the yeah, virtual speech would be a good way for like any support customer service person to be able to practice and be able to kind of um, get those points across clearly and precisely. Um, where we're practicing with um, AI and in VR as well um, can be like, it could put you more on a pressure than like yeah. kind of talking on the phone because it so kind of prepares you a bit more for those conversations um, as it is a bit more of a, like you're in front of someone instead of like being on the phone. So it does put you in a bit more of a, like a space of like nervousness. So it can get you a bit used to doing those kind of calls. That is, that is perfect. That is amazing as a project, as the idea. I congratulate you. And, Thank you. Uh, and we will do a partnership because uh, this should be like a standard way of trainings and learnings and then digital uh, AI digital agent will be just the consequence of it. It, it. it will learn also the end customer faster. Yeah, they will have the benefit to, to learn by themselves uh, in their job. They can ask whatever, whatever they, they, they like. Uh, what is team or, or, or job that they are doing. And then uh, it's like what should be said, that's uh, the right sentences. The mm -hmm. AI can handle all those uh, combinations. Uh, it will be real speech and the real feedback. And the real object that, are in, uh, that uh, is uh, comparing with the physical one. And then mm -hmm. that will be the added value the the customer knows that is real that is about his product not just uh, some uh, because that computer vision uh, model uh, it's based on the gpt4 uh, vision yeah. and then i vectorize that uh, uh, information that we have in pdfs and put the indexes keyword and hybrid database inside and deploy the customer it's like G GPT, um, uh, it's GPT four minus V like Vision minus Harris. It's my custom that he knows about Vodafone products, plus general knowledge or of the world, whatever uh, Microsoft put in that uh, Gen AI. Yeah. You know, and then uh, together with you, how to speak, how to train people, plus. Mm -hmm. At the end customer okay he can train with that uh, that physical uh, part and also uh, with the virtual object to understand uh, like uh, customer support itself to understand how to resolve the problem yeah. and the AI can help them plus when the uh, end product is over there the customer himself can resolve his own problem yeah, that that is the beauty of those two combinations. It's uh, it's a perfect match. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's a, a lot of people that can that really benefit, especially when it comes to training as as well. That we also put emotions on top of the avatar, so that they can um, pretend to be like upset with you, and then it kind of like makes it a more realistic situation when you're dealing with people who are basically. Uh, calling because they're not happy about something sometimes you will get like kind of good feedback calls, yeah. i guess but majority of the time um yeah the person that we, that the virtual speech will be training will be dealing with people who are like not happy and like in that kind of mood that um that ai was talking to me in just now basically and they will be throwing you curveballs all the time and trying to kind of escalate it more to speaking to a manager but you need to try to like kind of the aim of it is like make sure it doesn't get to that <laughs> Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah, it's excellent. Miles, thank you very, very much. And I will uh, do my trial. Two weeks, you said, yeah. Two weeks, yeah. yeah. So um, after the two weeks, um, we'll have another call. Um, but what would kind of the next steps kind of look like on your side um, if you were going uh, to move it, it will uh, It will present it to all my uh, peers. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. uh, probably I will put uh, this version of conversation on my YouTube that they know uh, what is about mm -hmm. and uh, and to collaborate because we we need to 
to to make the product out of it to sell your licenses our licenses to bring it together and to <coughs> to to sell to the customers uh, because in, te in teaching will be used in uh, <coughs> in guidance in uh, in exploration of new ideas uh, everything is possible yeah. okay yeah. amazing okay um, I'll see also um, if our co-founder can come to the call when we have our next conversation as well, okay? Mm -hmm. So we'll discuss this together. And also, also if you have uh, some video version, the presenting of uh, virtual speech, and mm -hmm. to attract those customers that I have from my side, and also they will see uh, our product, uh, our product, uh, and then the idea to bring that together to to or or to sell two licenses, one for yeah. training, one for guidance, like uh, yeah. to have that synergy. Okay. And yeah, I'll send it to you. Um, I'll send it to you after this call. Some videos um, of what it's like as well. Some demo videos. Yeah. Super. super. Okay. All right, amazing. Um, but yeah, it was nice speaking to you. And yeah, I will be in touch in a couple of weeks. And yeah, look forward to speaking to you then. Thank you very much. Bye, man. Bye. Bye.